So on the bench today we have a very interesting Galaxy S10e. This one, the proximity assembly, has gone supernova and basically just burned a hole straight through the uh, OLED display there. And if you're a fan of Jerry Rig Everything videos, you'll know that the burn test now actually has a point. And these pixels did not recover. So what we're going to do on this one is first things first, we're going to power this off and we are going to remove the back panel. I've already heated and removed the adhesive from underneath, so we'll just peel that up and off. Let's go inside and see what's going on with that proximity assembly. In addition, this one has a charge port that has been blown out completely to the point that the frame of the phone is entirely missing right here. Uh, this is aluminum and all one piece, so for that to be missing is rather questionable. Let's go ahead and remove all the Phillips head screws around here and see what lies underneath. All right, with all the Phillips heads out, we can finally remove this plastic mid-frame and see what state our board is in. Peel that up and off. So far, looking at the board, I don't see any major signs of damage or corrosion or anything that would have caused it to spontaneously combust the way it has. But let's go ahead and unplug that battery so that we don't get any spontaneous combustion. I'm gonna grab a SIM ejecting tool. We're gonna to flip the phone over and remove the SIM card out of the top. This will allow us to move the board out without damaging anything. Set that to the side. Then we're going to start disconnecting some flex cables. We've got the digitizer and OLED display right there. We've got our headphone jack right there. And to remove the actual jack from the frame, we're going to put in a Phillips head screw and pop that one up and out. Move that to the side. Let's remove our charge port Phillips heads at the very bottom. They did a great job of holding in the burning charge port. So we'll see what lies below there shortly. Let's remove our board screw at the top. That holds it down against the ear speaker. I'm going to disconnect the selfie camera. And I'm going to disconnect the power button and fingerprint sensor right there. The power button and fingerprint sensor are basically built into the frame, so that can't be removed. But I'm going to take the selfie camera out of the way. Then we should be able to remove the board pull it up and out, and we will remove this nice big C-shaped board. Once we've got the board out of the way, let's flip it over and see what our proximity assembly looks like. This is where things are starting to get quite a bit more curious. Let's zoom in a bit and see if we can't take a closer look here. Our proximity assembly is strangely intact, and I don't see any signs of burn damage around it. That's weird. Let's go look at the uh, the frame up top. This is where the proximity sits and the proximity assembly you can actually see that is right about where the burn mark is through that proximity. So something definitely occurred there but I'm not entirely sure what. Taking a look at the bottom of the board itself, we're going to look at the charge port. The charge port has no indicators as far as whether it's damaged, other than missing the entire internals. Let's see if we can't focus on that a bit. And you should be able to see inside there that this is pretty gnarly, pretty burnt up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this board over to the microscope and take a look at that proximity assembly at the top and see if we can't figure out what is going on with that. I'll be back in just a moment. After zooming in into our proximity assembly here, we are left with really more questions than answers to be honest. These tiny gold wires right here are properly connected and soldered right to their spots. Same with the stuff up at the top, and there are no signs of burn marks or anything out of the ordinary. And yet this did get hot enough to burn a hole straight through the OLED display. This is incredibly curious. Uh, these are also incredibly tiny. This is well beyond micro solder. This is practically nano soldering. Um, these are the pointiest tweezers that I have. They allow me to work on chips and components. You can see some of the board components down there. Uh, these things are absolutely tiny and minuscule. This is with the microscope at almost full zoom. Uh, let's see if we can't get any closer. 
yet still focus. It looks like uh, that, that's going to be quite a bit out of focus, unfortunately. So I can't really show you precisely what I'm seeing, but I can get kind of close. See that those are the absolute tiniest, tiniest little solder joints you've ever did see. And they are shielded by this uh, glass kind of acrylic panel, which also didn't break or melt. So not really sure what's going on with the board. Let's go back to the workbench and uh, we might test a new screen out and see what happens. Now in this particular repair, the customer actually does not want the screen replaced and wants only the charging port replaced, but that's mostly due to the cost of the screen replacement on the S10e. They are about as much to fix as they are to purchase a new one, but they still want it to work and they still want a little bit of data off of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert it into a new frame here. This is not going to fix the charge port obviously, uh, but we're going to fix the charge port later once my package arrives with the charge port in it. Right now we are mostly just testing to see what's going to happen. I'm very curious as to what happened to that screen beforehand. The burn marks were perfectly, perfectly around the proximity assembly. Um, there is no way that it was not from the proximity assembly, yet here we are, confused as ever, wondering why on earth this is not working? Why on earth did it get hot enough to actually burn through an OLED screen? Very curious. So I removed the battery from the old frame, and I'm going to install it right here in the new one. I'm going to then hook that up, and we're going to hold power to see if we get some power on. Apply pressure down so that we can get the vibrate motor to buzz to allow me to know that it is powered on. Spin that around, and we've got booting. There's no heat generated up at the top there, nothing out of the ordinary. This phone is quite the mystery. I think we might call it here and I may pick this video back up whenever we get that charge port in to show you how the USB-C soldering goes but for now this is uh, this is correctly working though I did note that when making a test phone call the proximity did not function it didn't actually uh, cut off the way it's supposed to so definitely some problems in there nothing out of the ordinary that would cause it to actually heat up though and it's definitely not heating up right now, so I'm not really sure what happened to this device. But that is uh, definitely what happens when your phone fails the Jerry Rig Everything burn test. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next one.